Starting in version 16.08, PLS Pole has expanded the ability to model and analyze wood pole defects. Previous versions of PLS Pole only allowed you to model through bolts, holes, or an estimated percentage of remaining transverse and longitudinal moment capacity. In addition, you could only apply one defect per joint on a pole. While well, in version 16.08, you can now select from several different types of defects, including an enclosed pocket, external decay, external pocket, hollow heart, and the pre-existing through hole for bolts. Additionally, if you wanted, you could now model more than one defect at a given joint as well. To access the wood pole defects, you can navigate to the same place the previous defects were entered at Geometry, Miscellaneous, Wood Pole Defects. This dialog, as you can see, has now changed a bit to add some additional columns for input. The first column you can assign a description to the type of defect you have. So you could, for example, call it a woodpecker hole or a through bolt hole. The second column allows you to select a joint along the pole where you want to place the defect. So in this event of, say, a woodpecker hole, you will need to create a joint along the pole element just to have the defect being placed there. Here you now have a column where you can select the various type of defect you want. And depending upon the type of defect you choose, you'll have to use some of these additional columns here. And the same optional input columns are on the far right here to enter a remaining percentage of moment capacity in either the transverse or longitudinal direction. Let's take a moment to cover the various types of pole defects in more detail. The first type of defect you can select is an enclosed pocket. When you choose this, you'll notice the column for surface damage is not needed. An enclosed pocket is a circular void inside of a pole's cross section. So the first input you need to enter is the diameter or width of that circular void. The second column you need to input the shell's thickness which is the distance from the outer edge of the pole to the edge of the circular void. The last input you need is the azimuth orientation of the void. If you enter zero degrees, for example, the void is pointing towards the right side of the pole in the positive transverse Y axis. If you enter 90 degrees, the void points downward towards the positive longitudinal X axis or out of the screen if you were looking at the default view of the structure when you first open it, and so on. The orientation and location of the defect in relation to the direction of maximum bending on the pole is very important when determining the influence of the defect on the capacity of the pole, which may not be incorporated in other software packages or old hand-based calculations. The section modulus of the pole is calculated taking into account the resultant load direction and position of the defect to achieve the appropriate reduction in capacity due to the defect and we'll see the impacts of this in an example in just a moment. The next type of defect you can select is external decay. This would just be a simple reduction in the outer diameter of a pole at a particular joint. So you only need to enter the depth or of the surface damage. After that, the next defect is an external pocket. This could be for something like a woodpecker hole that doesn't completely run through the pole. So the inputs you would need to enter would be the diameter or width of the void, then the depth for how far into the pole it extends, and then the azimuth for the direction the void faces. The next defect is a hollow heart. This is very similar to the enclosed pocket defect, but it's at the center, so an azimuth direction isn't needed, just the diameter. This defect would be for simulating a pole that had its core rot or decay. And the last defect in, is the one PLS pole previously had, which is a through bolt. This is a hole that runs all the way through the pole, so you'll need to input a diameter and an azimuth direction. Let's now take a look at an example to see the effect. In this example project, we have a simple 60-foot Class II Douglas fir pole with a clamp insulator at the top of the pole, so we can apply a 3,200-pound load at the tip that's pulling in the positive transverse axis at the zero degree azimuth to the right. With no defects, this gives us a maximum usage of 97.3% when we run the analysis. And if we look at the detailed analysis report, 
we can see that the point of maximum usage is about 35 feet down from the top of the pole. So next what I'll do is create a joint along the pole 35 feet down from the top so that I can place a defect there. Then I'll navigate to Geometry, Miscellaneous, Wood Pole Defects, and add a defect. I'll call it a woodpecker hole, assign it to the joint I made 35 feet from the pole top, and I'll select the external pocket defect. I'll place the defect point in the same azimuth direction as the applied load, 0 degrees to the positive transverse axis, or to the right as we look at the pole. I'll enter a diameter of 4 inches and say that the depth of the hole is 5 inches, and click OK. Now when I run the analysis, I can see that the structure is very heavily overutilized. Now it's at 163%. Well, if I go back to the pole defects and I change the azimuth of that woodpecker hole to 90 degrees so that it's in the positive longitudinal x-axis coming out of the screen towards us, and then I rerun the analysis, we can see that the utilization is now only 99.87%. So now we can really see how significant of an impact the location of a defect can be depending upon the direction of the resultant bending in the pole. We hope that you find this video and the new wood pole defects feature helpful on your future projects. Thank you for watching. If you'd like more information about our software, please see our website at www.powerlinesystems.com or contact us at info at To receive a quote, for purchase or renewal of your license, please contact sales at powline.com, and for any technical inquiries, please contact support at powline.com. Thank you for watching and your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.